Hello guys, in this video, I want to introduce the first version of the Ultimate Movement component. This project is entirely free to use. You can download the project from our website and use in your project. Also, there's another version implemented for the Ultimate Character project. Both versions are free to use, but you are not allowed to sell this project originally or edit it in any ways to anyone else. For the people who do not know about the Ultimate Character Project, that's a system to set up AI and player characters, including the attacks, weapons, blocking system, combo system, and so on. All you need to do is select options from the tables. Please find the links to this project and the videos in the description. The main feature of this project is you don't need to add any extra actor or volume to the wall or ledges. Everything happens behind the scene, and the system is clever enough to handle different kinds of situations. The other important feature is you can define a range of use for a single animation. All you need to do is to set the default value of your animation. For example, your default animation's sidewall jump length is 2 meters. You need to enter that 2 meters, and then you can define a range. For example, use the same animation for a side jump from 50 centimeters to 3 meters. Also, as you can see in the video, there are so many high-quality animations already exist in the pack. I used and edited animations from the Mixamo package, and you're free to use them. Or, if you want to replace them with your animations, you can do that very easily from the component menu. To add this project to your project, make sure your player character inherited from the BP player character. If your character is in C++ code also, you need to reparent BP base character to your C++ character class. After reparenting your character, open your player character and add the UMC component. Click on the component, and on the Details panel, you'll find UMC category. I'll try to explain each option by showing an example for each of them. Let's start with the thresholds. Braced moving step size. As you can see, the size of each step while character moving in braced moving mode. Free hang moving step size. Same as before, but for the free hang moving mode. Ladder moving step size. Size of each step for climbing up or down from a ladder. Forward trace distance. This is an important option. This is the distance the character tries to recognize objects before reaching them. For small characters, the default value is good. Also, maybe a little bit higher, depends on your character. But for the big characters, you definitely must increase the value. Obstacle Jump Thresholds These options for jumping over an obstacle while the character is moving or running. You can define any range you need, from very small to large obstacles. Depends on your animations. As you can see, these are my small obstacles. And these large boxes are my medium obstacles. In this case, I didn't use the large obstacle range. In this type of climbing, there's no hanging animation, and the character immediately climbs the object when you run towards the object and press the jump button just before the object. Now, let's go the animation section. First of all, you need to add these six sockets. The correct position of each of them is very important to get a better result from your character behavior. The next section is Jump Obstacle Animations. These are the animations for the last part of the obstacle jump threshold. As you can see, we have the same three sections for the small, medium, and large obstacles. Please note, 
characters can't hang from these obstacles, and they'll just go up over them. In each of them, you need to select a montage and write the section info. Keep in mind the length of each section is very important, and you must enter for each section. Also, we must add the default jump height for the medium and the large jump animation. These two are very important too. Try to find them by adding them into the level beside a wall or something. Then you can find the default jump height for the animation. Now move to Start Hanging Animations. These animations start hanging from an idle position, or when the character is in the air, or jumping from another wall, or something like that. Most of the options are similar in this section. Capsule Half Height. This is the size of the character collision capsule while the character is in this mode. Location Offset. Sometimes, you need to add an offset to the character mesh to align better to other objects. As you can see, if I set the offset to zero, my character is not aligned to the front actor. There are two conditions to start hanging animation. First, from idle, which means the character is standing in front of the wall, or something else. And the second condition, when the character is in air. For example, when trying to jump to grab the wall, or falling from another ledge. From idle section. Similar to previous sections, we have default height for the default animation jump distance, and then the range character can jump and use this animation. And in the animation section, we have the exact same options that we had before. Please make sure to complete all of them correctly, especially the length. And for the From Jump section, you have three sub-options, which try to play a start hanging animation depending on the time that the character is in the air, which means longer time in the air needs a harder grab of the ledge. Max Air Time is the time that the character is in the air. To run this animation, if you have only one animation, just use a big value for the short section. Max Dist to Ledge is the max distance from the neck of the character to the ledge when the character reaches the ledge. And the animation section is the same as before. Same as the Braced section, we have exactly the same options in the Free section for free hanging to the objects. Currently, the Rope option is not active in this version. I'll try to add in the next versions. You can support this project for the next versions from the donation link in the description. Let's continue with the ladder. Location Offset is the same offset value to align the character better. Currently, we can start climbing down or up from ladders only from idle, so we have two options for setting start animation of the ladder, from start point 1 or 2. Next section is Brace Hang Jump Animations. We can use these animations to jump while the character is in braced mode, so the character can jump to up, left, and right. Height range is the range that the character can jump up. Default jump dist is the default animation jump distance. And the animation section is the same as before options. For the left and right sections, we've got the same options but only one addition. Side range is the range that the character can check for objects to the left or right of the jump. Next section is Swing Info. The character can swing when it's in the free hang mode. Animation is the swinging animation. General Multiplier is a multiplier for boosting the jump. Z Multiplier is a multiplier only for the Z direction, which means more power to send the character into the air. Flip Animation is the flipping animation while the character is in the air after the jump. To start swinging, all you need to do is hold the forward direction on the controller, or hold W on the keyboard, and then press the jump button to start the jump. Next section is climbing animations. 
This is the animation when you press the jump button while the character is in the hanging mode, and then the character will climb up. The latter section is for climbing up or down animations. Hand socket is the socket that will try to determine to reach the top. Foot socket is the socket that will try to determine to reach the bottom. Climb curve is the name of the curve on the animation. To select the landing animations, click on the class defaults, then from the UMC menu, you can find the landing animations. For this project, I used animations from the Mixamo, but I edited them slightly to fit better in this project. When you're using your animations, always check the setup of the default animation in the project. For example, for some of the animations, you can't enable root motion option. In some case, animation is playing in place, but is not at the location you need after import. To fix this problem, try to update the import translation, and then from the asset menu, use re-import. By updating the translation, you can find the best place for your animation, and for other animations, you can check to see if enabling root motion is allowed or not. Also, this is important to keep the root bone always at the foot location. If I disable the root motion for this animation, you can see the root bone is always at the foot level. This will help you to have better alignment and higher quality of animations in your project. So please, always check the default animation settings for each option to see if using the root motion option is allowed or not. Now, open the animation blueprint you need to create your class, but don't worry, the setup is very simple. First of all, create a reference to the BP base character and store it in a variable. Then, after the update animation node, create a function to get the information from the character. And finally, call the getCharacterInfo function from the character and store the return value into a variable. Also, call the getLandingAnim and store the return value into a variable. We will create the AnimNotify later. Now go to AnimGraph and create all the nodes inside the onGround and onAir state machines in your animation blueprint. I will not go into detail as the setup is very easy, but make sure you created everything. Just for the landing animation notify, go to on air state machine, click on the landing node, and you'll see custom blueprint event. And in the right menu, write the function name and then compile. Now go to the event graph and search for the custom event. One important option you need to activate in your animation montage is playing the animation in the full body slot. Don't forget to open your animation montage and set the playing slot. Also, some montages have an important curve. The idea behind this curve is simple. While the value is less than 1, system tries to align the character with the current actor. When the value is 1, system tries to align character with the target actor. In another word, for jumping animation, when value is less than 1, system tries to keep feet aligned to the standing object, and after that, when value is 1, tries to keep hands aligned with the target object. Ladders in this project are dynamic, and you can change the height and mesh easily. So, to add a ladder in your level, drop BP Ladder into Level. There are some important options. Entrance 1 and 2 size are the collision sizes that the character can press the jump button to climb when it is in those boxes. Entrance 1 and 2 offset is for moving those collision boxes. Also, you have to find a good location and rotation for the start point 1 and 2. The character will start the animation from those points. Also, to set up a climbable wall, all you need to do is add BP Creepy Wall into the level. 
Then you can select the surface and the size of the area from the options. If your character wasn't aligned with the surface, try to move the creepy wall. That's it for today's video. If you like this project, please share and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can donate to this project from the link in the description, or supporting the project by purchasing the Ultimate Character Project from the Unreal Marketplace. Have a nice day, and bye!